What's up everybody? Welcome to I Speak Organized. Today's video is gonna be a quick tutorial on how to refresh your bathroom vanity space. This should be done at least every 24 months because all the stuff we keep in our bathroom expires at the latest after two years. My bathroom is in some desperate need of attention. I'm gonna take you in with me and show you the step-by-step -step process of how to do this in the most efficient, stress-free way. So stick around, let's get into it. My name is Melanie and I'm your professional organizer and product Activity consultant. What does that even mean? What's up everybody, welcome back. If you don't know me, then I would like to welcome you to the I Speak Organized YouTube universe. My name is Melanie and I am your professional organizer and productivity consultant. I help hardworking families and professionals find form in their space and purpose for every phase of life. If you love all things home organizing and decluttering, or if you are one of my viewers that is interested in becoming a professional organizer, then I encourage you to subscribe to this channel because I make new content on all of those things every Every single week and I would love to have you become a member of the speaker fam it's really simple all you have to do is hit the little circle icon of my face at the end of the video or at any time you can tap the little subscribe button down in the corner of the screen also be sure to hit the thumbs up and tap the little notification bell so you never miss another opportunity to learn something new about organizing and productivity okay so before we get into the bathroom I like to give you a few tips on how to make make this as easy and stress-free and efficient as possible. Whether you're a professional organizer looking for ways of maximizing your time in your client's home, or if you're just somebody who is looking for a few tips on how to make this easier in your own space, this is what I recommend with starting. And you need a plan of attack. And there are a few things that you're gonna need in that plan to make the actual organizing process less overwhelming. So the first thing that I like to do is take a photo of the space that I'm working in. And I'll pop that on screen now so you can see. Um, it's just a before picture. And this is great if you are a PO and you need before and after for your portfolio or your Instagram or whatever. Um, but if you are just doing this in your own space, I also recommend doing that because it gives you an idea of your general layout of what you currently are working with. From there, I pop those photos into Canva and I start to space map and you can do this on a piece of paper you can just sketch something out um, like a rough draft of what you want to do and I will take you into my Canva app here we are in Canva and I will just very quickly scroll you through the photos that I have taken for my sort of reference and I took these photos quite a while ago, maybe a week or two ago. And so it's easy to forget kind of what system you wanna set up and how you wanna change things. And so this is something I do before I buy any additional product. And I recommend that you look through and see what you already have that's working and then determine if there's something new that you need to buy. So if we're looking at this first picture, this is what my bathroom vanity currently looks like. And I am a professional organizer. So just know that, you know, things need Need maintenance they need updating it's like taking your car in for an oil change things just need a bit of uh, love and attention and care so I have decided that I'm going to put drawer uh, inserts and dividers in each of the drawers over here and over on this side um, so that my husband and I have quick access to the items we use for our daily routines, toothbrush, toothpaste, comb, you know, things that we reach for on a regular basis will all just be in one place. Um, and then you can see I have, um, I'm gonna be moving a bin over to this side over here, and I'm gonna be taking some of these bulkier cleaning supplies and moving them elsewhere. And so what I do is I just write in little notes about how I want the space to function. And I do that for every space that I have in my bathroom. And I have decided to purchase labels for each of these bins here. Um, so that I know what I want to keep in here. 
And so that is just kind of how that works. And then the same thing with the vanity top, I'm going to be decluttering this a whole bunch. I know I have a ton of expired product in here. And I actually have a video of the first time that I did this about a year ago. And so I'm not going to go into a ton of detail about how I determine the expiration dates of certain products. I will just link to that video up in the corner over here so that you can go and watch that. Um, and all my videos are timestamped so you can jump directly to the section that talks about finding expiration dates for toiletry items. So now we're going to go and uh, jump back into the next tip and then get in the bathroom. Okay, the next quick tip, measure your space. And this is something that for whatever reason, people are very adverse to doing and they just want to get started in the process and, and get moving and make visual visible change. Um, but you want to make sure that you know what is going into your space and if it's going to fit because there is nothing more frustrating than and having to completely halt a project because you chose the wrong size bin or you didn't get enough of something or you got too much and then you're having to involve returns, exchanges. I like to spend a little bit more time with the planning up front and I will take a notebook and my little measuring tape and go and actually physically measure and record what space I actually have. If I'm going to Target or Amazon or Container Store or whatever, you can go online and get get all of the dimensions that you need for the items you want to use and make sure everything fits, create a list, purchase what you want, and then go and install. Once I actually go into the space to work on it, that process goes so much faster. Just make sure that you have a good chunk of time set aside for just decluttering because you need to do that before you actually get to the organizing. All right, while I'm pulling things out and starting to go through my stuff, let's talk about the difference between decluttering and organizing because they are very different things. And uh, you always want to start with decluttering first. So decluttering is basically just culling the collections of things you own and deciding what you're going to keep. And you wanna try to focus on the things that you like and be very mindful about what is your favorite, what is your go-to, and then work your way from most favorite to least favorite. And then you're going to organize those things. So once you have decided on what you're keeping, then you can decide on how you want to store it. And there's going to be a little bit of back and forth between decluttering and organizing. Um, you're going to be doing both of those things sort of simultaneously. It's not a, a like cut and dry method and everybody is going to approach it differently. So these are my sort of mindset tips to not organize clutter. So let's say we're talking about a lipstick collection and you have 30 different shades and sizes of lipstick and you've decided that you are going to use a drawer makeup organizer and so you have one drawer that you have designated to hold your lipsticks and there's only going to be room for 10 of them. And so you start by choosing your favorites and filling up the container. So in this case, the container is, let's say one drawer. And once you have chosen your 10 favorites, you either need to establish that you have room to keep the other ones, um, or you just need to let them go. And there's really no right or wrong answer to this unless you are choosing to keep things just because you feel guilty that you spent money on something that you're no longer using, um, if it's perfectly good but you, but you don't like it, um, that's okay. You know, you can give it to a friend. Ultimately speaking, you should just toss it um, or donate it if it's brand new because you, the point is to get things out of your space, to live with less. Um, the less choices you have, the less overwhelmed you're gonna be, the less overstimulated, and these are all really important things. If you're feeling overwhelmed by stuff, you need to remember that the bottom line is to cut the overwhelm, and the way to do that is to train yourself to appreciate the space to appreciate having less. And so if you are having a really hard time parting with those other 20 lipsticks, you know, you, you just need to maybe 
put them in a box for a little while and put them in a space where they're out of the way but they're not necessarily gonna be accessible. And then set a little reminder on your calendar for a month or two um, to reassess the value that those things have to you. And if you get that little reminder in two months and you have completely forgotten about those lipsticks, then you know that you can now give yourself permission to pass them on. Okay, update. So, uh, everything is a crazy, crazy situation right now. I am making progress, so this is my daily essentials drawer. This is my child. There are children helping. Super helpful. So, yes, this is a very overwhelming part of the process. That's totally normal. And you just have to do the best you can to stage things. Um, when my clients get overwhelmed by stuff, I usually will grab a table or a box or a series of bins to kind of corral things temporarily. I call it staging, so that we're in the staging part of the process. Take a deep breath. You kind of just have to push through it. It's a little uncomfortable, um, but don't freak out if you just like need to leave the room for a minute and grab a hard seltzer and just chill out and then come back and keep pushing on. 2,000 years later. In order for us to be successful with these types of decluttering projects, we have to set up realistic expectations for ourselves. And so there are some mindset shifts that need to occur. And the first one is to set realistic timeline expectations. Can't go into a project like this with an hour and a half thinking that you're going to finish it. You're not gonna go from start to finish in 90 minutes if you haven't gone through and inventoried and decluttered along the way the items under your sink or in the drawers or in the cabinets or the shelves or whatever it is that you're working on. If you haven't gone through and purged or inventoried what's in those spaces in several months to years, it's unrealistic to expect yourself to be able to get through every little decision that you need to make and all of the physical running around back and forth and putting things in boxes and sorting and categorizing in an hour and a half. So what I suggest to do is just set the expectation ahead of time that this might take you a few days. It might take you several hours. It might need to span, you know, maybe you only have 20 to 30 minutes to spare each week and you're just going to continue to do that on a Tuesday evening week after week until you get it done and just be a little bit more gracious about how much time you're gonna give yourself and in order to keep going on a project like this you're gonna need a space to put things aside that you can come back to later and so what I usually do is set up a bin or a box and I will put the things that I'm currently working on in that temporary zone and that way it's tabled until next time maybe I also will create a little note just to kind of refresh my memory when I come back to work on the project and so I can just kind of pick up where I left off pretty seamlessly and I also make sure to look at my calendar and designate a specific time ahead of time and get that on my schedule and then the next really important mindset shift that needs to happen is to think about micro tasks so what I mean by that is you can't do a project you can only do the next related action to the project and so I call those micro tasks and we're just focusing on something that's immediately actionable. So instead of thinking about the overall bathroom decluttering, we're just gonna be focusing on getting rid of the expired product, or we're just gonna be focusing on going through one drawer, or we're gonna be focusing on creating categories of weekly hair care, the immediate next available action to move the needle forward on a project, which then allows us to feel like we're making progress and kind of fuels the motivation that we need to cross the finish line. Alrighty, all done. Thank you for sticking around and watching the whole video. I hope that you found some of the advice and the tips and the storage ideas useful. And if you did, please, again, I will remind you to give me a thumbs up. Be sure to comment down below if you have any thoughts, any questions. And if you ever need to get in touch with me, the easiest way to do that is to DM me on Instagram. I'm always happy to connect with viewers and 
talk to you guys about organizing stuff. And you also are welcome to check out any of the links in the description area below to connect with me in other ways. I have an exclusive Facebook group. I do virtual organizing and all kinds of things. Um, and if you're interested in working as a professional organizer, I also offer professional consultations and I have tons of videos on how to start your own business. So be sure to kind of check through the catalog and see what speaks to you and let me know what you think. And beyond that, I hope you guys have a fabulous day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.